Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television GPTV. I'm Brett, and my hands is a Life of Che, published by Fantagraphics, or I'd say like reprinted by Fantagraphics is the better way of uh, really describing it. Uh, so this has been out for a while, the actually original uh, version of this. So uh, this is done by Alberto Brescia and his son Enrique Brescia, and they teamed up with writer Hector German Estorheld uh, to do kind of a, a biography about uh, Che Guevara, Ernesto Guevara. Uh, and it weaves together his last days in Bolivia, him meeting up with uh, Fidel and the Cuban Revolution, his radicalization, um, and it's a really interesting uh, portrait of a character who's become a pop culture idol at some points. Uh, that seems to have waned over the years, but, you know, I definitely remember when I was in high school, like in the late 90s, people, you know, rocked their Che shirts. Um, you know, it doesn't quite seem to be quite the, uh, romanticization and, and, um, monetization of Che in recent years, though. Um, so the book was actually, this is the interesting part, and I guess we'll keep on why going to the back of this, is because I think this is actually really interesting. Um, so it was released originally a year after Che's death. It captivated the Argentine uh, readers and became an instant bestseller. And then in the 70s, the military government raided its publisher, destroyed their ability to reprint it. And it was restored, restored in Spain in 1987 and never been translated into English until now. So this is the first English translation of this graphic novel. Um, it's interesting. Like It, it describes itself as a, a romantic biography, a meditative graphic biography. Um, and I definitely see that. Like, it's not quite a straight narrative like you would imagine with biography. It's not a, you know, start as a kid and, you know, see what he's like as a teenager, see what he's like early, and then go through everything kind of in, in um, order of, of time. Uh, it bounces around a little bit. It kind of focuses on key parts of his life. And I think really attempts to emphasize what made Che Che. Like, how did he stand out and how, how did he differ from... Uh, people like Fidel Castro or other revolutionaries. And it's really kind of interesting, and, and I would say it romanticizes him a lot. It really does, um, you know, you respect his vision in many ways. I mean, you don't necessarily have to agree with him, but, you know, in the end, I think there's there's a bar, part in this where he says, you know, you, you can go and do all these things and, and do revolutions and overthrow the, the capitalist society, all that stuff. But really, in the end, you need to go and fix... And, 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 you know, you can go in as a doctor because he was trained as a doctor and, and go and fix bones and cure uh, lice and tuberculosis or whatever, all these diseases. But in the, in the end, there's there's these fundamentals that you really have to go work on and, and fix and uh, help the people, um, you know, really just really start over and try to fix the system. And to that, I think, like, it's interesting is I think his basic philosophy is a lot of the arguments that go on today. I mean, you know, the... We've seen some memes going around in the last week or so about how billionaires added like whatever a trillion dollars to their wealth over the last year while a million people died. Um, they added a trillion dollars. Uh, and, you know, I think that kind of speaks to a lot of what Che was getting at, um, that there is a broken sense to the system that the, the average person isn't taking care of, that it really is a, a, a line between those who work and those who profit. Um and it, I think it's kind of interesting, you know, to to read his, you know, what he thought. And, you know, this isn't on that, his exact words, and it's not his, you know, his thoughts down, but I think it gives you a general sense of what he was thinking. Um, you know, it also kind of shows that he wasn't quite as hardline and, and, and was a bit more practical than I think a lot of people gave him credit for, that he was willing to go and uh, represent Cuba and meet with the United States to try to find a peace after the revolution. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the United States was was putting the screws to him because they were uh, messing with the uh, corporations that, let's face it, really run the United States. Um, and I think all that it gets really, really interesting. But I think further in that is that he attempted to travel around and find brothers in arms and he had trouble finding it you know it, russia wasn't an ally he saw them as another form of imperialism uh he saw through the the bullshit of, of mao and the chinese revolution um you know he really did try to go after the cuban revolution and and uh really back up his philosophy 
Uh, and I, you know, I give him respect on that. Like, props. This is a dude who actually, like, attempted to, to live... Uh, to, to see through what he believed. And it's not saying he's a good guy. Like, he's, he's a shit heel in many ways. But, like, you know, you gotta give some respect to someone who actually, like, lives out their philosophy and doesn't just uh, espouse things and then is a complete hypocrite. Um, the art of this, I think, is, is really interesting. You see it's this black and white, um, you know, not quite totally clear. It takes a little bit to kind of see things through at times um, and figure out exactly what's going on. But I... I because it does like a lot of shadows and things like that. It's it's really like hauntingly beautiful. It's it's interesting. It's a very different style that I don't think you just you don't really see this today. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's an interesting one. Yeah, I'll admit like I'm not an expert at Shea. I, I couldn't tell you um, it's really tons of specifics about his life. I know the very basics. Um, so it's just kind of interesting reading this, going through and, and seeing its perspective. So. I, you know, if you're interested in that, it's, it, the art's beautiful, the stories, how it's presented, I think is really interesting and, you know, might get you to rethink a little bit about, um, him and, you know, how he's been presented through, like, just in general, the, the Cuban Revolution, uh, how's that has been presented. Um, so yeah, this is out now in comic shops. You can go get it. We've got a link beneath this video. Open your zip code to tell the comic shops near you. No shop, no problem. We do have some links where you can purchase your own copy. There'll be affiliate links so we do get a small percentage. Uh, the irony. Uh, by doing that, you all support our site. And speaking of support, just watch our video support us. So thank you for that. If you are into graphic novels, if you're into comics in general, check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr. All that graphic policy keeping it nice and consistent. Until next time, keep reading those comics and keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.